Now we'll look in a little more detail at how the sun emits its energy and how it is received by the earth. First I want to provide a little bit of basics of solar physics. So the sun is a giant star that consists mostly of plasma and ionized gas. It has a core that's extremely hot, around 15 million Kelvin. And then it has a interior layer and energy diffuses outward from the core to this through this layer. And then there's a convective zone And finally, we have uh, the photosphere. And the photosphere presents the visible surface of the sun. And it emits most of the radiation that we receive. And so it has all these photons emitted from different depths of the photosphere. And the temperature at which the sun radiates is about 6,000 Kelvin. So it's still very hot, but much cooler than at the core, which has 15 million Kelvin. The sun also has sun spots that appear and are variable and those sun spots have four to five thousand Kelvin temperature. Now the big question is the light that's being emitted and received by the earth what wavelength does it have? And, maybe even more importantly, how does the surface temperature, the 4 to 6,000 Kelvin that we observe, translate to power that's emitted from the sun into space? And there's two laws that answer these two questions, one and two that physicists have derived. Number one is Wien's displacement law, which gives us the wavelength lambda as a function of temperature. And the second law is the Stefan Boltzmann law, which gives us solar forcing F as a function of temperature. And these two are what we'll look at next. The Stefan Boltzmann law. So this empirical relationship allows us to relate the energy emitted by a body to the temperature at that body's surface. So here F is the radiative forcing or also called the flux of energy. And the units of this flux are watts per meter squared. Sigma is known as the Stefan number and it is quite easily remembered because 5, 6, 7, 8. So sigma is given as 5.67 times 10 to the minus 8 watts per meter squared per Kelvin to the power 4. Now T is the surface temperature of the body 
that is emitting this energy and it is measured in Kelvin. And having this power 4 dependence on the temperature means that the radiator forcing is very sensitive to temperature changes. For example, if you double the temperature of your radiating body, you increase the energy flux that it emits by a factor of 16. The energy flux, as described in the Stefan Boltzmann law, describes the energy emitted by a body integrated over all wavelengths. It does not tell us at what wavelengths the radiance that em is emitted from the body has the most intensity. So the question we're asking now is the sun, at what wavelengths does it actually admit its energy? And we can describe that by using another empirical relationship that's called Wien's law. And Wien's law tells us that the peak wavelength, lambda peak, is proportional to the inverse of the temperature of the body. So it's equal to B over T, where lambda peak is the wavelength at which our emission has its highest intensity. B here is a constant and that is roughly 3 micrometers per Kelvin. T is our surface temperature and we note now that the higher T, the shorter is our lambda peak. So the sun, which is extremely hot, has a very short peak wavelength, namely in the micrometer range. Let's look at a schematic of what the spectrum of the sun's emissions looks like. So here on the horizontal axis we have the wavelength at which energy is emitted. On the vertical axis we have the intensity at which it is emitted. For a body that radiates at one given temperature we can compute a smooth curve using a third radiation law, namely Planck's radiation law, which we're not going to discuss in more detail here, to calculate one smooth curve. And for the Sun, the best fit to the actual spectrum is this smooth curve that corresponds to a body at 5780 Kelvin. The blue line here is an approximation to the actual spectrum. It's a little rugged and not as smooth as the theoretical curve because the sun does not actually emit at just one temperature it also emits at different temperatures because radiation comes from different depths of the photosphere and there's sunspots and other irregularities. Now the peak wavelength of the sun spectrum is at about half a micrometer and that is exactly the yellow intense color that we see when we look at the sun. So the visible light is a substantial fraction of energy that the sun puts out and to its right in the longer wavelengths we have the infrared radiation and to its left we have the UV radiation. And this concludes our short introduction to the Stefan Boltzmann law and Wien's law.